Hi, welcome to the Color Curator Podcast. This is a fiber arts podcast coming to you from the base of the Rocky Mountains in Golden, Colorado. My name is Liz and welcome. This is episode one of a brand new podcast. So I'm excited to have you join me on this adventure. I hope we get to learn a lot about each other and grow our knitting community, fiber arts community. In this episode, I want to give you an introduction as to who I am and why I'm doing what I'm doing. I also want to share with you what I'm wearing because it's hand knit and I love that. I wanted to share with you a few of my current works in progress um, and uh, something interesting I found out about Ravelry. So, you want to join me on this adventure? Let's get started. Okay, so why do I want to do a knitting podcast and who the heck am I? Um, my name is Liz. I am a 37-year-old work-from-home mom, mom of two boys, and I am I work from home doing my business, which is Colorful Eclectic. I am an indie dyer. I've been married to my husband for forever, if you like, um, 14 years now. And we, yeah, we live in Golden, Colorado, and that's where I am recording this podcast from. The reason why I want to participate in producing a podcast is multifold. Um, One of the things that I love most about my knitting community is the fact that I get to participate. And that means going to knit nights and seeing all of the wonderful things that people are making and complimenting them and learning those little gems that I get to learn when I'm around other people. And I love that. And so I want to expand that community um, a bit more by being online and having this podcast. So I would love if you would um, participate back. Uh, Leave me comments on YouTube or um, on the website. Uh, I I would love to have you join in the conversation. Follow me on Instagram, which is at Colorful Eclectic, and comment to me there as well. I love to come and see what you're working on and share and just, you know, be a part of this really uplifting community that we have of knitters. So that's definitely a reason. Um, As I said, I am an indie dyer, so I wanted to use this podcast as a way to share what I'm making in my um, dye studio and uh, share that with you guys. So hopefully you want to stick around and check out my um, shop information section. Uh, I wouldn't say that I necessarily do shop updates as much as I'm constantly updating the website and adding new inventory to that. So uh, that's kind of an ongoing thing rather than like once a week. So that's just my, my way of working with it. But anyway, I will be sharing things about the shop here. So I hope you enjoy that as well. Um, I think that's all I wanted to share during introductions. So with the rooster saying goodbye, (laughs) um, let's get on to what I'm wearing. Okay. So what I'm wearing today is my newly finished, this was finished just in the nick of time to call it a 2017 finished object. And it is the So Faded Sweater by Andrea Mowry of all of the popular fade fame. Um, The colorways are all my own and I'll share with you here on my sleeve. So... This is the amaryllis color. Down here, the purple is aster. This here is filled with a bouquet. Going into the blue is larkspur. And finally, gardener's apron down here. 
And that's all colorful eclectic on the Alation sock base, which is uh, my 7525 Superwash Merino Nylon. I love this sweater. Um, <laughs> I feel like I've worn it at least every other day <laughs> since it came off the needles. And I'm going to continue to wear it. Um, it's the perfect time of year to be wearing uh, a sweater all the time. And I feel like this here in Colorado, a fingering weight sweater is, is a three season sweater. So I know I'm going to get a lot of use out of this sweater. Um, as well as the other projects that I have this coming year, which foretelling what's that? What's that word? Spoilers? No, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, let's move on to what I'm working on. So what I'm working on, I'm super excited to get to share my first, um, what I'm working on with you. I have five works in progress right now that I'm going to share with you. This is not my full works in progress. I'm just going to share with you what I'm working on currently. Um, and for me, the new year brought on a need to finish up some um, old things. So I pulled some things out of the kind of longer standing whips because while I was working on the so faded sweater in November and December, I didn't work on hardly anything else. So I, um, I feel like some of these whips are kind of stagnant and I need to really uh, get, get some work on them and get them done. Um, so Without further ado, let's start with something new because <laughs> nothing like starting something new in the new year. Um, one of my local friends, Amy, uh, her she decided to uh, make some convertible mitts, and I was intrigued by the idea. I wasn't quite sure if like intrigued enough to want to do some myself. I wasn't sure if this would be something that I would want to do for myself. So I asked my husband, I showed him the, the picture and I asked him if he was interested. Um, and he said he very much was. So hopefully I've shared a picture of that maybe over here or already, um, with you. And I really like the idea behind these mints. So here's my progress so far. and I am excited. The, let's talk about the details first. The yarn is Stonewall in the color Elf Alpha, and it's their 100% um, Cormo worsted, and it's an American Cormo. Uh, I picked this up at Fancy Tiger. Um, a worsted weight yarn and I'm loving it. The fabric that this is making in the rib I'm kind of meh about. Um, the Let me move that yarn out of the way there. The stitch definition is kind of different than what I'm used to. I am not used to working with yarn um, this large in a two ply that that's this kind of defined. So I think it's just an aesthetic thing that I, I need to play with. However, the texture and the feel of this yarn is wonderful and I really, really love it. Um, yeah, the color is something that my, is straight up my husband's alley, what he, he wanted out of it. And I'm, pleased with the, my progress. Um, okay. So I shared with you the yarn. I share, oh, the needles. I picked up a set. My favorite needles, hands down, are higher, higher sharps. I have an interchangeable set in the large and in the, the small sizes and in the five inch tip length. And I love those needles. However, since my local yarn shop, the Recycled Lamb, went out of business, it's been over a year ago now, I haven't been able to source the tips or source parts for it locally. Um, 
And when I've tried to look for them online on say Amazon or whatever, I'm having a difficult time finding the parts that I want. So because of that, I went to another local yarn shop, Colorful Yarns yesterday, and I picked up these Chowgu um, interchangeables. And this is a test drive for buying a set of interchangeables for myself. Um, so I, I've not had much experience with the red lace cable and I'm so far, I like it. We're only about four rows in, um, to my change over, but so far I like it so far. I like the, the needles themselves. The tips are similar in sharpness, um, and texture, the feel of them. Um, so I think these are going to be a likely, um, investment in this new year. Um, for me. So yeah, I'm excited about that. And so the final thing I wanted to share with you is this beautiful bag that I have this project living in. This is a bag that Nancy from Front Range Bags produced uh, this way. And it, um, she produced it. We, we did a collaboration last year. Um, I, and we sold kits. So the, it was the bag and then two skeins of yarn and, or excuse me, not two skeins of yarn, a bag, yarn, and a stitch marker set. So, um, I really love this bag and I'm pleased to, to use it. So yay. And front range bags are so well made. I just can't even gush enough about that. All right. So my next project, I... This is, again, spoilers to later in the show, but I spent some time on Thanksgiving weekend planning out what I wanted to make for 2018. Um, part of that is because I love to plan things. <laughs> um, and part of it, it was um, some strategy stuff business-wise. And because I want to have samples. I think that samples are a fantastic thing. If I'm in a booth wearing this sweater, you can see and touch and feel all the way that this yarn knits up and the texture of it, all of that. And, um, so I, and I really love the idea of sweaters. I completed four sweaters last year and I really enjoyed that. Um, the fact that I have these things that I made to wear that I'll wear all the time. I love making shawls, um, and I do wear them a lot, but I can wear a sweater hanging out at home all the time. And that's a lot of what I do. <laughs> so, um, I had a, I had a plan in place, completely planned out the whole year, giving myself six weeks per sweater. And then my friend, Michelle, and my friend Aurora destroyed that plan <laughs> in the best way. Um, Michelle is the proprietress of Independent Street Yarn, uh, Independent Street, and she is an, an indie dyer. And um, she and Aurora host a bi-weekly, a twice a month um, knit night for us here locally in Denver. Um, and they host knit alongs during this and I love these knit alongs and the last one for a hat, I didn't participate in and whoa, the FOMO was strong. <laughs> um, everybody, it seems like has a fantastic new hat from this. So when the chance to make a sweater in the new year came up, I couldn't resist. Even though I had the plan in place and, and this was not a part of that plan, oh, I had to do it anyway. So the sweater is a is Timeless Henley by Hohi Locatelli. And it's a gorgeous sweater that is um, produced in pieces to start and then it's joined in the round and you um, add sleeves on later and it's a gorgeous ribbing, gorgeous ribbed, um, top. And then it goes into a lace detail, um, from just above the bust 
from about the bust, eh, high bust, down, and then stockinette sleeves and some buttons because it's a Henley style and I think it's going to be gorgeous. So I swatched. I, I did the, the right thing and I went ahead and swatched. So here's my swatch. There we go. And oh my goodness, do I love this fabric. I went up in needle size based on um, previous work that I've done from Hohe's patterns. I know that I my gauge is, I need to increase one to two needle sizes for my gauge to match what she says. So I went up in needle size and was happy with the fabric. And so I decided to wash and block and just see where I was. And lo and behold, I am on gauge. So yay, I love when that happens. Um, this is an hourglass lace pattern and I just think that's gonna be so beautiful. So, yarn details. The yarn is Colorful Eclectic in Ecstasy Sock and the colorway is Vintage. This is a part of my black tie affair, or excuse me, my, my black tie collection um, that I produced last fall. And so here is my progress and I'm going to get things tangled up. All right, here we go. So here's my progress thus far. Um, this is the back, I believe, and it. I love the the ribbing on this because it is going to have that little bit of stretch if needed and the I love the yarn um, this will be the second sweater I've knit using the 50 merino 50 silk base and it's it just feels luxurious it feels like such a treat to knit um, even though I am not a particular fan of knitting one by one rib it's it's just so much slower than knitting um, stockinette or even purling. It's just so much slower than because of transitioning back and forth around the needle. So, but you know that. Um, what other details do you need to know about this? The needles I'm using are US 4 millimeter and... Oh, you can participate in the street along if you'd like. We always love having virtual participants in the Facebook group. You can search street alongs and I'll make sure I leave a link in the down bar. Um, yeah, so come and join us if you want. It actually hasn't even started yet, but early cast ons are not a problem. Late cast ons are not a problem. The I believe the knit along is going from mid-January until the end of March. But if you want more info, info about it, click on the link below and um, there's all of the details there. So I hope you join us if you want. Uh, I think Michelle offers some pretty fun little prizes for participating. Plus the best prize of all, having a sweater at the end. I can't wait. So again, this is living in another favorite bag of mine. Um, this one is by Fat Squirrel. Um, Amy Beth makes some great bags and in large enough sizes that I can fit my five skein sweater projects in. Um, I can fit more than five skeins in, but uh, being a larger gal, I need to have a bit more room to put all of my skeins and me, all of the, all of the, all of the things that go in here. So that's all in that bag. <laughs> Okay, so the next project I have to share with you is one of those ones that's been on the needles for way too long. I don't even know when I started this pair of socks. Um, and they're shorty socks. So why is it taking so long? Oh, who knows? Okay, so here is a, a close up of this one. This is just a basic vanilla sock that I've got. I did have a um, contrasting heel that I added in. This is the Fish Lips Kiss heel. I do my socks toe up. Um, and yeah, I just did 
uh, about 10 rows or so of stockinette after the heel and then switch to rib just to have a quick short sock. My, I'm sure my intention with this is to have a summer wool sock because I, I like to wear my wool socks year round. I find them to be incredibly comfortable. Um, so, but I don't always want to have a long cuff, just something short is sufficient. And so I decided to do that, but I got this far into this one. And then I, um, I think I was about to here when I last picked these up. And so from knit night, I added this bit here and I'm really happy, um, because I'm now at the place where I can add in the contrast heel on the second sock. And then it won't take hardly any time at all to get the, um, the short little cuff done on this sock. So this is on, again, here's a close up of the yarn. This is another colorful eclectic. This is the quite a shindig um, colorway, which I just really enjoy. Um, here it is in the very sad looking cake because that cake's been hanging out for who knows how long. Probably since April. I think since April. Oh goodness. That's a while. <laughs> so uh, these are something that I really want to have done before the next time I record, um, which hopefully will be next week. So that's something I'm really pleased about and can't wait to get finished. I've got this along with another sock that I didn't work on, so I won't be telling you about. Hanging out in a great bag. I believe this is the twofer bag that I picked up at Estes Wool Market last summer from Erin Lane Bags. Erin Lane. Um, I really like this bag for having two sock projects in because I don't tend to do two at a time socks, but I can put two sock projects, one on either side of the divider, um, and all of the different stuff. It does have this cute little snap, um, on the bag, which you can put that on a belt loop, which I think would be a fantastic way to, I plan to use this, um, for any events that I attend that I'm not going to be vending. I'll just throw this on my belt loop and be able to knit as I walk around and do. So there's that one. So another, um, <laughs> another project where I've had it on the needles a while. I don't even remember when I cast it on. <laughs> this is a, um, a blueberries, wa blueberry waffles pattern. Um, but I just did the patterning. I don't know if you can see that. There you can. I just did the patterning across the front and did vanilla across the back. And I, again, a fish lips kiss heel. I, I did it toe up with Judy's magic cast on. Um, I don't do my socks extra tall, but they do tend to be here. I'll slide this one off here. When I make my socks, they tend to be about this length if I'm doing regular length socks for myself. So I go to, I tend to go to about where I start the toe and then I start the ribbing. So this is just a little short. That way they tend to end up being about the length, um, from heel to toe as heel to cuff, which I think make a beautiful thing in your sock drawer or in my sock drawer rather. Uh, the yarn on this is my supernova colorway. And what else do I have to say about the yarn? I don't think I have much to say about that. Um, the second, so I just finished the ribbing on, on this one at knit night and um, set it aside because I wasn't going to cast on a toe at knit night. That, <laughs> that's something where I don't have the brain space to do all the time. So uh, I set it aside and I cast on and I believe... I am two increased rows away from the toe being done and will be able to get into the patterning on the foot. And this is a simple enough sock pattern for me that I feel like I can um, work on this wherever. So if we're, you know, car tripping or anything like that, I can work on this pattern. This is not 
um, something where I feel like I need to have any kind of, this is going to be a great knit night talk because I'm definitely not working on my Henley during knit night. Uh, the, the lace and I need calm and quiet. So yeah, I'm, there's that. <laughs> um, okay. So the, the needles that I'm using on this are high, high sharp. US ones, 2.25 millimeters. And so I tend to mostly use two millimeter needles. Um, but I have some ones from when I was only using uh, US ones. And so it's sometimes, I sometimes I'll just grab one of the, the ones, but I tend to use US twos because I really like the dense fabric that I get from that and the, the durability of that fabric. So anyway, that's this. It is in a modular modular project bag that I picked up. Um, I think we swapped for this at Weenit, Colorado last spring. And who doesn't love donuts when, <laughs> when you can't eat donuts all the time, have a donut bag because it, you know, makes you feel like you've had donuts. <laughs> um, I really like this bag. Uh, Katie sells these. If you want to purchase them online, I through her Etsy shop. I'll link that below. And if you are local, uh, I know she has a few of them available at Fancy Tiger as well. Okay, so the final project that I want to share with you today is my Goldfish Memory. This is a pattern by Casapinka, and it's a three-color wrap and... Oh my goodness, do I love this pattern. Um, I am in, I keep forgetting, I'm in section 10 of 12? That's the part I keep forgetting. Of 12. So I just have a couple more sections and then I will be done with this pattern and I'm super excited to have this as a project. Um, this is, so it's, it's a big project because I'm, I've got so much in it. Um, so I'll give this to you in kind of sections, hopefully without dropping everything on the floor. All right. So there's my cast on edge there. It immediately goes into color, um, transitions. I really, I love this slip stitch detail. Um, in this, I believe that's in the third section, one, two, three. Um, and then it goes into some stockinette with garter. Again, more stockinette with garter, changing the colors. Uh, again, changing the colors. This is just stockinette. Um, and then a lace portion, which took me forever to do because I feel like I need to have my pay attention brain on. Um, doing lace. I know that it will get easier for me the more I do it, but I always find that that's a stopping point for me when I hit any part of lace in any project. So you won't see a whole lot of lace shawls from me, at least while I have young children. Um, more just garter stitch, um, Again, color uh, changes in garter stitch. And then this last se last section that I'm working on transitions from stockinette to garter, um, which I love. So my colors in this, the color A I've chosen is called Bring on Spring. Um, color B is purple velvet and color C, which I'm almost out of, is celebrate. And that's got some fun speckly business going on there. So I can't wait to have this done because this is going to be a fantastic sample to have in my booth and just a wonderful thing to get to wear. Um, I, I love this style and size of wrap. I've, I did a Lily Pilly, ooh, was that two years ago or did I finish that last year? At any rate, uh, I did a Lily Pilly and I love to wear that. Um, don't ask me if I blocked it or not. <laughs> um, 
So that is it about the yarn. The needles, again, are Haya Haya interchangeables. This is on a US 7. So the final section of today's podcast is not going to be a shop information section. It's, um, if, however, if you do want to check out my shop, please do so. You can find it at colorfuleclecticshop.com. And I hope you find something there that you're interested in. If you do find something that you're interested in and want a bigger quantity than what I have available, just send me a message or go ahead and place the order and I will get that put into... Uh, the dye pots because I want everybody to have sweaters this year. <laughs> uh, I know there have been uh, at least a couple of podcasts mentioned that this is the year of the garment and I decided <laughs> that it was the year of the garment back in um, November when I cast off my campsite pullover. Um, and then immediately cast on the so faded sweater. So it's the year of the garment for me as well. And based on that, I wanted to share some stuff with you, but I forgot things. So I'm going to, let's try that again, shall we? Um, so something came across Facebook. Um, one of my, uh, Facebook friends had put a, a comment on there or shared, um, Ravelry's latest post to their blog where they have a, what are they calling this? Ravelry project challenge. And I read the post and I went, that is right up my alley. Um, because I basically already did the work. And so all I had to go do was look at the tab, <laughs> um, and click on the wanted to participate. Um, so what it is, is if you have projects in your queue and you set an end date prior to the end of December 2018, it will, and you click on, so if you go in your projects page and across the top where there are tabs to the challenge tab, um, and I'm just going to do this here real quick. So go to the challenge tab and it will fill in any projects that you post finished in the year, as well as anything in your queue that you have set a project end date before the end of 2018. So for me, if you want to go take a look at it, I'm more than happy to share with you. You can add me to your friends. I'm Lizzie the mama. Um, I'd love to add you back. Um, but you can see on mine, I have a Granito by Hohi Locatelli and my deadline is April 22nd, 2018. And I have a Hachur, Hatcher, we'll go with Hatcher by Bristol Ivy. And again, a May 6th, 2018. Um, then we're going to switch it over to some teas uh, with the Water Lily by Megan Fernandez. Um, my deadline is June 17th. Um, the Morning Mist by Annie Roden, Rowden, Roden. Um, is due by July 29th. And of course, these are all self-imposed deadlines. Let's, let's be real here. Um, I want to do another Breathing Space by Vera Valimaki, and I want to do that in the fall. So that's a September 9th deadline. Um, I want to make a Pavement by Vera Valimaki because I've seen one or two of them recently. I can't remember who I've seen them on, but holy cow, do I love this pattern on people. So I, I want one for myself. Um, and then the Comfort Fade Cardi by uh, Andrew Mowry. That was one she released in October, I want to say it was. So that's my December sweater. And then I had a customer message me about a brioche pattern that she thought I might have in my... Um, as a booth sample. And I went, you know what? I didn't have a brioche pattern because I've never knit brioche, but it gave me the idea <laughs> that I should probably get on some brioche. So I have, um, added to the list, all that brioche by Lisa Haynes, H A N N E S. Hannes. Anyway. And I've just put the de deadline on that as December 31st, 2018, because I don't know when I'm actually going to get to that. I feel like 
I need to get some of these other things. But I put that I would like to do 15 projects this year. Um, based on previous years, it's kind of a stretch. Um, but I know that there's going to be some socks. There's going to be some sweaters and mostly sweaters. <laughs> Let's be honest. There's going to be mostly sweaters. And if I can fit anything around the sweaters, that'll be awesome. Uh, I am looking over here at a giant box of projects that I need to go through. Um, I, I don't want to rip anything out. Uh, it's just a matter of actually logging the project into my Ravelry project page so I can remember that it exists. Um, sometimes it's a good thing that I remember that projects exist and sometimes it's just that mental weight. So we'll see. Um, but yeah, well, I've got lots of projects to share with you upcoming. But as I said at the beginning, I'm only going to share with you what I am actively working on. So what do you think of this Ravelry challenge, project challenge? Are you going to participate? Um, it's all self-imposed stuff, so I definitely <laughs> think that's kind of fun. Um, but if you do decide to participate, leave me a comment below with your Ravelry name and I'll go check you out and see what you're doing and, you know, share my encouragement with you however I'm able to do that. Um, so yeah, and if you think that the idea of a project challenge is absolute rubbish, let me know that in the comments as well because you know, I'm curious if there are, there, I know there are more people out there like me, but if you're not like me, I'd like to know that as well. So let's call that the end of this first episode because otherwise I will get super rambly and I'd like to, you know, keep this concise as possible. I hope you had a great time sitting with me, learning about my projects, learning a little bit about me. If you'd like to introduce yourself to me, um, please do so in the comments below. I would love to find out who you are and what your current work in progress is. Until next time, I hope you make something awesome. Bye.